Maybe you're like Jeff. You want to practice good stewardship, but Jim, this mic is really hot on stage. You uh, want to practice good stewardship, but you have no idea what that looks like. You want to be a, a good steward of your, what God's given to you, but you have no idea how to do that. It's okay to be honest. Uh, we, we've, we're, we're into this, uh, how do I love my church, or I love my church, what does that look like? We've talked about community, we've talked about the fences that we put up, and how we tear those fences down, how we get involved in the community and get involved in one another. And we, we shared last week a, a meal together, and we, 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 uh, we just had an awesome day fellowshipping together. We talked about what building a strong church looks like through service. And we talked about our superpowers and our spiritual gifts. And tonight I'm going to share with you your results if you're here. <laughs> That's a sucker way to get you here, isn't it? I'm going to share with you those results. Today we're going to talk about giving. We're going to talk about what that looks like, how that makes us a, a stronger church. i got to be honest with you about something, though. You're welcome, Bob. I, I'm a little nervous this morning. I mean, everywhere I've looked, there's not like a bucket of Gatorade anywhere, is there? Okay, I know who's on Facebook now. But i got a question for you. How many of you have a hope chest? It's kind of a, a lost thing. But who, who has a hope chest or had one when you were little? How many of you are saving one for someone else? What do you put in a hope chest? You put in stuff that you hope will be something that's worth something. Something that you, will, that you hope will give someone after you some hope or some encouragement or some excitement. Things of value to you. Now, sadly, the reality is a lot of this stuff may end up on American Pickers or, or Pawn Stars, but... We, we, we purposely save stuff hoping that it's going to have some value someday, hoping that it's going to mean something to somebody. And, and if, it, if it doesn't have your last name attached to it, it may mean absolutely nothing to you. If it's not a family keepsake, if it's not an heirloom, whatever is in that hope chest may just be completely empty, kind of like this one is right now. I'm, I'm hoping we're going to take care of that in a little bit, but... It doesn't mean anything, but to those that have stored it, to those that have saved it, to those that have kept it, there's a significant meaning behind it. You, 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 you put something away for the future. You put something away for, for those to follow you to take advantage of. It's not for you. It's for someone else. Is the whole point of a hope chest. I'm putting away for my kids or my grandkids or my, my whatever to have a better day. Kind of the concept of giving, if you think about it. It's a, it's a concept that the early church dealt with, and that they, uh, we have a very, very, very powerful lesson in what that giving looks like um, with the early church. Turn over to the book of Acts with me. Dr. Lou, we're going to let him talk to us this morning. In our, our Bible study Wednesday night, we were continuing the talk of, the, of what the spiritual gifts are and what they look like, and, and there was kind of a common theme that your gifts, when you're using them in the right context and you're using them in the way that God has provided for you, uh, you remember I made the statement last week, something along the lines of your gifts mean nothing if God's not in you. It flows out of Him and through you. It's the abundance of Him flowing out of you that those gifts are manifested. Giving may be just a little bit opposite of that. It's not always out of the abundance that we give. Hmm. Ouch. You mean it's not when, when the budget is, is in the black that I give? It's when the budget's in the red sometimes I might have to give too? Uh-huh. It's not when there's nothing that I need that I give? You mean sometimes I'm going to have to give in spite of the fact that I need to? Uh-huh. It's not always out of the abundance that we give, and that's what we see here in the church. Sometimes that's a reality. Sometimes it's not. Read with me if you're there. Acts chapter 4. It's on the screen for you too. All the believers were united in heart and mind. Hey, community. Isn't that interesting? The walls have to come down and the community has to take place for this to happen. And they felt that they owned, and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything that they had. 
The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was poured upon them all. There was no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those that were in need. Now, that sounds like an all-or-nothing proposition, doesn't it? They went and they sold houses and they sold land and they gave to those that were in need. Now, I'm not proposing that you go and sell your house. I'm not proposing that you go and sell your car. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But here we have a tendency, if we're not careful, to get into this mine attitude, to get into this me, me, me attitude. You remember the movie Finding Nemo? I love the seagulls. They're a great example of this me, me, me attitude. And it makes you nervous when I play a video and turn around now, don't it? Yeah, it should. Jim, throw that video up there. Shut up! You rats with wings! The bloke's been looking for his boy Nemo. Nemo? He was taken off the reef by divers and this... They're taking it, Harvey! Hey, hey, say that again. You just said something about Nemo. What was it? Fight, fight, fight! Mine? You ever catch yourself being that way? Yours is mine. Mine, 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 mine. It's kind of like when you get married. What's hers is, what's mine is hers, and what's hers is hers too. Yeah, something like that. But anyway, we get that way. We're not careful. It's all about me. We're selfish. We can't help it. We're raised that way. From the, what does a baby want? They want to be fed, they want to be clean, and they want to sleep. That's very selfish. They don't know anything else. What do I want? I want to be fed. I want to be clean and I want to sleep. It's funny how the older you get, the more like a baby you become. But anyway, I wonder sometimes if that's the way God hears us. Mine, 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 mine. And I wonder if every now and then he's just telling us, would you shut up? Listen to what you're saying. Pay attention to what you're doing. Have you ever heard him tell you to shut up? That's a scary thing. <laughs> Quit talking about me. Let's talk about others. Let's get into the community. Let's talk about those among us that can't say mine because they don't have mine. Matter of fact, they don't have anything. That's the ones that we're talking about here in Acts. The church came together because they were a community. The church came together because they loved one another. The church came together because they got the fences out of the way. And they learned that if they took care of each other, if they just gave, no one would be in need. Wow, what a concept. I wonder sometimes if Jesus, if God hears us get into this mind mentality and just wants us to wake up and get out of it. Three, three things for you to do this morning on how we can get out of this mind mentality. The first is this. Everybody hold your hand up. Make a fist as tight as you can. Now just let go. Release your grip. Not yours in the first place. Think about that. What did the early church do? They took everything that they had. This first verse, 32. All the believers were united heart and mind and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything that they had. They took that mind mentality, that grip they had on everything that was theirs, that stronghold that they had, and they just simply said, I'll let go. Easier said than done, isn't it? <laughs> but pastor, if I let go, I can't pay the bills on Friday. If I let go, I will be hungry. If I let go, I will not have cable TV to watch the football game. If I let go, I. A whole bunch of I's in there, aren't there? It's not about I. It's about you. It's not about what I can do for me. It's about what we can do for others and for those in our midst. The church, the early church, lost its grip. They let go. It's easy to say, well, it's easy to let go when you don't have much. 
Really? I would almost propose it's harder to let go when you don't have much. Oh, it's easy to let go when you got the seven figures in the bank. You may not even miss that. What about the case of Ananias and Sapphira? You remember them? They were struck dead because they lied about what they let go of. I don't want to be them. I don't want to be the one that, that I, I hold a little bit back because I think I need it when God's saying, let go and give it. I don't want to be that one. It's not as simple as, as that. It's, it's, uh, this is simply not the place to make excuses or to be seagulls. <laughs> not the place to say mine. It's the place to be obedient and what God would have us to do, and what God would have us to give, and where God would have us to give. It's simply a matter of being obedient and letting go and releasing the grip. Now, you may be sitting there thinking, great, he's just going to preach to us about tithing again. Who thinks that? It's okay. We've already taken up the offering today. You can say it. I wish that this was a simple message of here's what a tithe is. Here's what you're supposed to do. Here's what we're expected to do. I wish it was a simple message of that. We're going to talk about the storehouse collecting, and we're going to manage it. And, yeah, we're going to take a little bit to the side for administrative purposes, and we're going to do this, and we're going to do that with the church. I wish it was a message that simple, but it's not. And you need to understand something, that a lot of times when I'm preaching to you, it's, I, hello, I'm, I'm preaching to me too. It's hard to let go of your grip of what you have. This is a much deeper message than just writing a check. It's a much deeper message than just putting a dollar in the offering plate. It's a message about loving one another enough to give out of need. To give out of the expectation that a need is going to be taken care of. Now to do that, you have to know what the need is. And we'll get to that in just a minute. But yes, there is a reality that things have to take place to keep the lights on. There's a reality that you have to, to do things maintenance-wise. There's a reality that you have to pay people. There's a reality that you have to, to, to buy curriculum, and you got to mow the yard, and, and you got to do all these things. But where this becomes a problem is when the giving becomes just to mow the yard, or the, the giving becomes just to buy curriculum, or the giving becomes the thing that just keeps the light on. And that's it. We're, we're given out of the wrong heart. We're given out of the wrong motive if we're given for that. We're supposed to give in the excess of the love that abounds in us. Does that make sense? It's easy to write a check. It's easy to budget in 10%. But that's not what it's about. You know, there's more to giving than just money. You know that, right? There's giving of our time. There's giving of our abilities. There's giving of our knowledge. Wow, a lot of these things play right into the spiritual gifts of what we are gifted to do in teaching and, and, and serving and, and uh, ex exhorting. The encouraging part of that, if we're not giving of those things, our gifts will never be realized. It's more than just money. We just happen to be talking about money in this case. The fault comes when we fail to meet the needs of people because we meet the needs of a building. Think about that. The fault comes when we fail to take care of each other because we're worried about the lights being on or because we're worried about the grass looking pretty. Don't get me wrong. Those things need to be done. But when that's our motive and that's our driving force, we start to sound like the seagulls again. We've got to let go. We've got to release the grip. So when you release your grip, you've got to do something else. You've got to tighten your belt. What does that mean? What does it look like to tighten your belt? In verse 34 and 35, there were no needy people among them because those who owned land or houses would sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those that were in need. You've got to make room to be able to give. You've got to make room to be able to help. You've got to tighten up the belt to take care of you, to be able to take care of others. What does that look like practically? Maybe that means, I don't know, it's what, 75 cents to buy a Coke in the can now? You buy one of those a day, that's 
what? Dollar fifty three four twenty five a week. That was quick math. Probably wrong, but there's let's call it five dollars a week. There's twenty dollars a month. What could a hungry family do with twenty dollars a month that I didn't need to drink that coke for? That's tightening up the belt. That's finding the places that I can make room to be able to help. Maybe it's, and again, I'm not proposing that everybody go sell their house. I'm not proposing that everybody go sell their cars and, and sell all your clothes and, and, and all these things that we have. There's nothing wrong with having stuff. You know that, right? It's the attitude in which we deal with that stuff. Maybe we do need to downsize in the vehicle that we drive. Maybe we do need to downsize in the house because the kids are gone and we, need a, we could get a buy with a smaller mortgage. And think of the things that could be done with the excess of what you now have that you didn't have before you tightened the belt. That's exactly what the early church did. They realized there are so many blessings that are going on. I'm going to go liquidate. I'm going to go figure out what I can do to continue to bless. Wouldn't that be cool? We got a new fancy paint job and some nice carpet over there. Let's just go sell everything and let's all sleep in bunks in the, in the, the nice gym over there and, and we can give everything else. No, I'm not proposing that. There probably would be no one show up next Sunday if that was the proposal. <laughs> but there might not even come back tonight. But there are things that we can do that are just practical, simple, little, everyday things. One less drink. One less, <laughs> one less soda. I don't know. Maybe in your case it is one less drink. Maybe one less movie. Let's order one less pizza this week and let's eat sandwiches at home. Let's, uh, let's, let's go out to eat one less time this week and let's eat peanut butter and jelly for that meal. Or maybe let's skip a meal altogether and let's pray while we're fasting that meal that God would bless the effort that's coming out of that. Well, there's something we don't talk about a whole lot anymore. There's always the ability to tighten our belt to find the means to take care of someone that's in need. Would you agree with that? Now, I'm beating you up right now. I'm going to brag on you here in a minute. I'm beating you up right now, but... If we can learn how to let go, we can learn how to release the grip, realizing that what we've been provided is not ours in the first place. God provided it all to begin with. He's just asked us to be the stewards of it. He's asked us to be the hope chest, if you will. He's asked us to take it and to use it as he sees fit with our discretion to spend it. We're the storehouse. We're, the, we're God's bank. Now, where do you put your money? In a bank that gives you a good return on your investment or a bank that charges you fees and takes money from you? Doesn't make sense to put it where they charge fees and take money from you, does it? It makes sense to put it where you get a good return on investment. I hope I'm not the one that's charging God's fees. I hope I'm the one that's giving God a good return on his investment. I'm the bank. You're the storehouse. We're all expected to give and give freely as we've been given, but we've got to let go of that grip. We've got to tighten the belt and find the places to be able to do that. I'm not talking about the, you know, generally when we talk about giving, what are the things that pop into your mind? The homeless on the corner, the street corner. Those that don't have clothes. Those that, we, we tend to be fatalist, if you will, in a lot of ways. We, we think of the worst case. What about the single mom that her car is messed up and she has to drive, ride the bus to, 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 to work every day? What about the, the family of, of four that dad just lost his business because he works in the oil and gas industry and they can't pay the mortgage this month and they can't put food on the table because they've already been through all their savings because he's been out of work that long? What about the college kid who's, who's, who's all of his funding for that year is gone and he doesn't know how he's going to pay for his next class. It's not always the worst case that we need to take care of. There's needs in this room today. You know that, right? Maybe even some of you have thought of a need that you have while we've been talking about this. Maybe you've thought of a need that somebody else has because you're so tight in community that you know each other. There's needs all among us that we can take care of. 
there's needs of people that you know that aren't here today that we can take care of if we just let go and we tighten the belt. And the third thing, we need to do just like the church did. We need to just give it all away. But you just said you're not going to ask me to sell my house. You just said you're not going to ask me to go sell my cars. Well, you're right. I'm not. But the apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, and God's great blessing was upon them all. And that provoked them to go and sell everything. That provoked them to go and liquidate and give to all as they had need. I wonder how they figured out what the needs were. I wonder if they just laid out the, the coffers and said, hey, if you need something, come take it. You know the little penny jars at the, at the counters at the gas stations? Need a penny, take a penny, have a penny, leave a penny kind of thing. You ever seen anybody make change out of those? Me either, but how often do you actually take a penny out of that? It just feels wrong. <laughs> now, I'll leave a penny in there all the time. What if you have a nickel? Do you leave a nickel? I mean, it says if you need a penny, leave a penny. You know a nickel's five pennies, right? Just checking. It just feels wrong to take. It feels right to give. What if there's a reason for that? But do you know everyone at some point in time has a need to take? Everyone at some point in time has a need that someone else's giving can help them out. There's no shame in that. There's no fear in that. It's a reality of life. We all deal with stuff. The early church understood that. And out of their generosity, everyone was taken care of. There's been government after government after government that's tried to do this. You could call it socialism. Every one of them has failed or is failing. Why? Because you can't mandate love. You can't mandate a kind heart. You can't mandate somebody give because they want to give. If you mandate it, you start to build walls. If you mandate it, you start to hurt feelings. You start to create resentment. Community is not about resentment. Community is about connection. Community is about love for one another, not resent for one another. Community is about opening up and giving, not closing up and holding on. It all has to come out of a right attitude with a right relationship, just like all of the rest of this that we've talked about. The community has to come from a right relationship. Our, our ability to serve has to come out of a right relationship with God. Our ability to give has to come out of the right relationship with God too. All the believers were united in heart and in mind. That's not just with each other, that's with God too. The things that you can do when you trust in that relationship, the things that you can do that you never thought you could do when you trust in his ability to give through you will blow your mind. You can look at the church checkbook and the numbers don't make sense. We shouldn't be able to give like we give. We shouldn't be able to help like we help. But I guarantee you it's, it's done because you do it with a heart that's in the right frame of mind with God. If you just did it out of motivation for something else, it would fail. If you just did it because I want the big tax return at the end of the year, it would fail. But when you do things because of that united heart and that united mind, God can take it and shake it up and do some amazing things. And then what happens, like in verse 35, they bring the money to the apostles to give to those as needed. And just back up a verse, everything was distributed and no one had need. Wouldn't it be great to come to a church that nobody had need? Wouldn't it be great to be part of a community where no one had need? Not going to happen. You know why? Because we still live in a world where bad things happen. We still live in a world where people have to deal with stuff. We still live in a world where there's hurt. We still live in a world where people do things that have repercussions for us. Sometimes that costs us money. Sometimes that costs us time. Sometimes that costs us a lot of hurt. But I want to propose something to you today along the lines of this giving it all away. 
This is our hope chest. It's empty right now. We've got a couple of programs in the church that we've put together. And, and, and one of them, I'm going to brag on you for a minute. Over the Christmas holidays, you created the ability for us to help about four families. Really help about five families. To the tune of around $2,500 we were able to help these families with. You know, that doesn't happen by not letting go of the grip. That doesn't happen by not figuring out ways that you can give more. And I thank you for that. I thank you tremendously for that. Those families thank you for that. But there's always somebody else in need. We started a fund a year ago called the Compassionate Ministries Fund. And our intent with this fund was to spend it every month, was to let it build up and spend it every month for someone that has a need. I can't tell you the number of people that come by the office that I'll talk to or Roosevelt will talk to or Christina will talk to or, or, or David when he's up here, that someone will be here and talk to. You would not believe, actually you may believe, it would break your heart some of the needs that people have. Now, I'll, I'll grant you some of them are not needs. Some of them are handouts. Some of them are people looking for an easy way. Some of them are, are, are people looking like that last seagull, mine. <laughs> That's just reality. But we've, we've put into place some, some practices to, to be able to filter through the minds and help those that are truly in need. But that doesn't happen without your help. That doesn't happen without you giving freely. We've been talking for a year about a food pantry. There's probably, I don't know, four or five phone calls a day or more people that stop by looking for help with the food pantry. And we've talked about getting it set up and talked about getting it set up and talked about getting it set up and it just hasn't happened. We've been taking care of some other things. Well, I'm ready for it to happen. I'm ready to quit talking about it and do. But I want your help. I want you to give it all away to make it happen this morning. Here's what I'm talking about. I want everybody to stand with me. And I can't ask you to do this if I'm not willing to do it. I don't know what you have with you. I don't know what I have with me. I have $47 in my wallet. I'm giving it all away. To help start the food pantry. To help start an ability to give to somebody in need. Now, if you don't have the ability, just reach in the person's wallet in front of you. <laughs> That's why I had you stand. Alicia, could you come to the piano for a minute? And I was, you got some march music you could play? I'm not trying to pressure anybody. I know there's some in here this morning that don't have a dime to their name and can't give a dime. Some of us can. And I'm just asking you, I don't know what you got in your wallet. I don't know what you got with you. Maybe it's your lunch money tomorrow. Hey. Maybe while you're fasting during lunch, you can pray about what that $10 is going to go for. But I'm just going to ask you to put your money where your mouth is, literally, and give it all away this morning. No pressure, but if you're willing while Alicia's playing, let's get this thing rolling. I wonder if this is what it looked like when the church came together and gave everything away. And put it in the storehouse so that those in need could be taken care of. I just wonder. I don't want anybody remembering who walked up here and who didn't. I. I couldn't tell you. I don't want to know. But what I do want to do is I want to give this to David so that he can take it and he can count it. And I want this to be the seed that starts our food pantry. I can't tell you how many people come every day looking for that opportunity 
looking for that need. Maybe it's just going to be one day a week. I don't know. Roosevelt's been working with trying to get some things going. Amy and Mike have been working with trying to get some things going, and it's all going to come together. But it doesn't happen without support. So that's what we're going to use this for. And I want you to bow your heads with me. And I'm just going to ask that God would take this and that he would bless it. Maybe there is somebody's lunch money in there. Maybe there's somebody's light bill in there. I don't know. But I'm going to ask that he would take it and that he would bless it so that someone in need, because the church is willing to give it away, can be taken care of. Would you just pray that prayer with me as we dismiss this morning? Father God, I thank you that you have provided for us. And Lord, I thank you that for some of us, you provide in in an abundance of what we need. And Lord, I just pray that you'd rattle us a little bit. Pray that you'd shake us to understand that all of it is given by you. And it's given to us for us to be good stewards of and for us to take care of and for us to, to not be greedy and be a seagull with, but to help those in need with. And Father, I just, I just ask that you take whatever this is and that you would bless it as a seed to be able to make this ministry grow, to be able to make this, this food pantry to become a reality so that we can take care of those in our neighborhood that, that, that are in need to, of providing for their families. And Father, we know that everyone falls on some hard times every now and then. And, and there's no shame in that. There's no, uh, uh, there's no reason to be bashful in that. It's a reality of life. And Father, just ask right now that you would take this and you would bless it. Bless it like you did the loaves and the fish, that it wouldn't be just a few dollars, but it would multiply and continue to multiply. And we would be amazed at how you can use it in your kingdom. Father, I thank you for everyone that's here today. I thank you for the the open hearts and the response to give as you have asked us to do and to provide as you have asked us to do. And Father, I just pray a blessing on each one as we leave here today. We thank you. We love you. It's in your son's name I pray this morning. And everybody said...